Here we graph the restoring force for a rubber band, that is the force that the rubber band exerts when it's stretched out, uh, the, the force that tries to pull the rubber band back together, versus the number of centimeters of stretch. Now this is an actual data. Uh, this is kind of what a lot of actual data looks like. It's not quite linear. We've got a systematic deviation from linearity. We go above the best fit line and then down below it. However, it's close enough to linear that we're going to use it and we're going to pretend that it's pretty much linear. Okay, so we have a force versus X, restoring force versus the displacement of the pendulum. And we have a best fit straight line. If we analyze what this data is telling us, let's just say that we read our data and we see that a 4 Newton force corresponds to a 20 centimeter displacement. And let's also suppose that the graph goes through the origin as it should. Uh, doesn't mean it necessarily does, but it ideally should go through the origin because, of course, zero displacement is going to give you zero force. Okay, so we have 20 centimeters. I forgot to label it. I should say X in centimeters. Um, two things we can calculate, and we've got a graph. We can calculate the slope. We can calculate the area under the curve. It should be a natural impulse. So the slope is very easy to calculate. If we got the origin and the point 24, then the slope is going to be the rise, 4 newtons, divided by the run, 20 centimeters, 0.2 newtons per centimeter. This tells us how many newtons of force is associated with a 1 centimeter increase in the stretch of the rubber band. So if I have the rubber band stretched, stretch it another centimeter, this is telling us that that should give us approximately a 0.2 newton increase in the force that's tending to pull the rubber band back together. It's tending to squeeze it back together. Okay. We can also calculate the area. It might be a little hard to read, but the area is the average of the two altitudes, 0 here and 4 newtons here, so we've got 0 plus 4 newtons divided by 2 multiplied by the 20 centimeters, and that comes out 40 newton times centimeters. Now we might ask, how much work is done in stretching the rubber band? Okay, uh, in, in the uh, region corresponding to this graph, the work is going to be the average force times the displacement. Well, how do we get the average force? Well, we average the force at one end, which is zero, and the force at the other end. That is, when it's not stretched out, the force is zero. When it is stretched out, the force is four newtons. So zero plus four newtons divided by two multiplied by the 20 centimeters we stretch it out. Now, that's not a 20 centimeter stretch. Maybe there's a 20 centimeter stretch and a four newton force. So we multiply the average force we have to exert to stretch it by the distance we stretch it and we get the work 4 newton centimeters and this is the work it takes to stretch out that rubber band. Now this slope I'll mention delta F over delta X, the change in the force over the change in the stretch is 0.2 newtons per centimeter. That decimal might be a little hard to see but it's there. 0.2 newtons per centimeter. We call that the force constant and we'll be talking about that later. Uh, this is for the attention mainly of 241 students. The force function here is 0.2x. If you've got a slope of 0.2 and we're going through the origin, then f is going to be 0.2x if x is your position along here. To get the area under curve, as you know, we integrate from one position to the other. So we integrate from 0 centimeters to 20. We write that as the integral from 0 to 20 of 0.2x dx. You can do this integral and validate that it's 40 newton centimeters in agreement with all our other calculations so that the calculus gives you the same result as everything else.